welcome back to the show. Vancouver is indeed a dog city, but what happens when your doggy gets hurt? Okay, up boy. Up. Buddy? Buddy! <laughs> We're going to play how to handle that situation. Michelle Sevigny is joining us. She's the founder of Dog Safe Canine First Aid. How are you? Good, good. Thank, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And your fine friend. Monty, of this course. Is this is Monty. He's a Rottweiler. He's about six years old, and he came from the Vancouver City shelter. Very nice. He's had him for about five years, so he's our demo dog. Yay, lucky he fella. He likes being Michelle, a demo dog. this is such a great idea. I mean, everybody loves their pets. They become part of the family, and yet... Nobody that we've talked to on our crew that has pets really knows first aid yeah. specifically for their animals and for their dogs. How did this idea come to you? It came out of a personal need. I needed, I had a Sharpe who was about seven years old and she became paralyzed. And I had to transport her at three o'clock in the morning. I didn't know how to do it properly. And it's one of those things that you go, I feel like I was letting my dog down, yeah. right? Sort of I wish end. I could do that and again. This, I need to know how to do this better. And so my background in policing, sort of a lot of experience with emergency response and how to deal with it, I was calm but still didn't do it in the best way I could. We have to have that knowledge. So maybe you can Absolutely. tell us how people, uh, you pass it on to people with your courses and such, because you should be trained, yeah. don't follow what we're doing today. People <laughs> are trained to do this properly, mm -hmm. just like first aid, correct? Exactly, you know, we can give you a little snippet of a, a rundown here, but it is a full day course that we offer. Um, we run you through with the CPR canine mannequin, so you actually get a feel for what it's like to actually do the CPR on a dog. If you don't, if you've never done it before, you're not going to know how to do it. And reading a book is really just not enough of it's skills. Why yeah. people take first aid courses? Exactly. Yes, yeah. with the Annie doll. So Michael has been uh, kind enough okay. to offer <laughs> to uh, learn how to do CPR. Does this thing have a name? Is, you know, we haven't named him yet. Unfortunately, I just on buddy. spot one, spot two, sort buddy. of. Buddy, buddy, <laughs> buddy. Okay, let's switch buddy places here, and I can bring on to Monty for you. Okay. So is it like when uh, a person has an issue, you assess the scene, and blah blah blah? It, exactly. And, you know, we go through six different steps that we would have you go through. The biggest one is to, is to stay calm okay. okay so we don't lose our minds okay because that's freaking out for a second there <laughs> and again we're not going to get through all those different stages no. but essentially if you come here and you're doing the assessment on your dog you want to check his airway so in this case you want to see if he's got anything in his mouth you can pretend to open up his mouth he's got a velcro mouth there oh does he <laughs> Pull that tongue, don't open them all the way up through. I said open her mouth. Of course you would do this gently with the real animal people. I yeah. can't, wow. And this is an animal that we can actually get to. We're not, uh, I can't, get, not I can't open the mouth. The you'd velcro's have, too strong. You have a look in his mouth, pull that tongue to see if there's anything stuck in there. If okay. there wasn't, you're gonna assess for his breathing. Look, listen, and feel for breathing. Exactly. Nothing. Well done. <laughs> I've taken first seconds. aid course. <laughs> yes. And the principles are the same, right? For humans right. or dogs. Same idea. Yeah. Then look, listen, and feel. And feel. See if you can go here, feel it going up and down. Exactly. Okay. Putting your head right down there and see if you can feel any breath coming out. If you've got no breath, we're going to start by giving him two breaths. So it's mouth to snout. Okay, and I use this. <laughs> you betcha. Put that there. Right on the nose. Hold his mouth closed. I don't know who's more excited about this, <laughs> me or. And the watch dog. the chest area here, and you're going to see a. Oh, look. There you go. Did I do it? Look, buddy. Did, did it work? The tummy bear. Harder. Over here. There you go. See, you can see it going up and down. Buddy, you're going to be okay. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. So that would be a couple of breaths. Then you're going to stop and you're going to assess for a pulse to see if his heart's working. So, so dare I ask where the pulse is? Why, can, why where your hand is? Or? Just, yeah, we're going down there. <laughs> we're going down. <laughs> so if you feel underneath the leg. You know, strange enough, you can find my pulse in the same spot <laughs> if you need to. The femoral artery. You yeah. can put your hand just underneath the leg, sort of reach at the top. Uh -huh. If I pump this. Oh, yeah, there it is. You feel it? So I can test yep. people, right? I think that's it. <laughs> so if he's got a pulse, you don't have to do chest compressions. You would be just going back and doing artificial this insulation. Is fine, no. <laughs> so what is the contraption over the snout that Mike has there? That's just a training shield we use for uh, hygiene reasons when yeah. we're doing with mannequins. Because okay, so I've got cooties. <laughs> now that's I noticed right. that there's a dog safe first aid kit, and we've got uh, Monty's uh, first aid kit that he carries on his back. But what is exactly. the, what do you have in one of these? Linda, if you want to open up the um, the red one there beside you, Mike. Oh, this one. Yeah, yep. that's sort of a real basic small kit. That's underneath the seat of my car at all times. Oh, that's a great and idea. It's something you can put in your backpack with you. And in this case, you know, Monty can carry it as well for going hiking. The basics for wound ca wound care. So lots of gauze, lots yep. of rolls, lots of trauma bandages. Um, saline to wash out any of the wounds while you're there. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah, at least you well, have okay, it. Okay, you know what? We're, we've got Monty here. He's getting a little <laughs> bored. Sorry, Monty. Um, but I made a boo-boo once with an Irish wolfhound and approached him when he was uh, in a little bit of a traumatized state. And I got bit. And yeah. I, I, you know, well, I, I deserved it because it wasn't the right way to approach a dog. Now, yes. approaching an animal, especially a large one like Monty when it's hurt, can be very dangerous. So maybe you can tell us how to approach him properly if he were hurt and he, he were traumatized. Absolutely. And the, the, we mentioned about the principles being the same for people first aid versus animals. It's true. true. He looks so traumatized. <laughs> right now. I know. Traumatized by not having a treat. Yeah. Monty is traumatized <laughs> by boredom.
However, the difference between animals and people is that although people can get sort of combative, Spicy, dogs yeah. can bite you, and then we want to make sure that you're safe, number one. So you may not actually be able to approach that dog. If he's growling at you, you're not going to be able to get in any closer. So if you actually can come in, you know, come in quietly, come in softly, talk to the dog, let him know you're coming in, and do things. It's funny, the couple of things that you can really do that helps to calm a dog down is to lick your lips and pretend to yawn. Why? Really? Right. Is that a Sympathetic or? That's interesting. Is that a psychological thing? Yeah. It's what dogs will do to themselves to calm themselves down, which Monty's <laughs> we're not yeah. exhibiting it here. Monty, <laughs> calm down. Monty, if you calm down, down anymore, I'm going to come over there and have to give your mouth the snout. I think. And dogs will use that to calm other dogs down as well. So it's something that we can do our best to sort of say to them, hey, buddy, you know, I'm coming Very in here to help you. Well, obviously, we've just given people a little this quickly uh, a muzzle. Yes, a muzzle. And if you can get your hands on the dog before you're actually going to be doing some first aid for him, muzzling is one of the things I would say is a must. If it's your own dog or anybody else's, because then it's just going to control, he's not going to be able to bite Would this be something you sure. have in your first aid kit or carry with Definitely. you? Definitely. Yes. Absolutely. And it just goes on. If your dog has never been muzzled before, they may not necessarily like it, so you can just use liver treats like this. Monty's like, no, Mom, not the muzzle again. Yeah. Hey, brother. And you just slide yeah. it right on, sort of like that. Monty doesn't mind the muzzle because he knows it's... It's connected to liver treats all the time. <laughs> Why do you fall for it every time? You mind it. it. Get this thing off my face. <laughs> Boy, but so that's a good thing to teach a young dog as far as just get used to a muzzle because you just never know when well, you're going to use it on them. Thank Very you so nice. much, Michelle. If you want to participate in one of these classes so you can learn dog safe and know how to uh, approach an animal and treat an animal, when it's been traumatized or hurt, you can go to the website on your screen and find out more information. No. <laughs> Take my pulse. <laughs> this will be done. Seemed like appropriate at the moment. <laughs> I don't know. We're going to take a break and come back with more after this. Good idea, actor. Monty, go get him. Monty, get him.